What's going on guys? It's been a really interesting day so far today. I uh, picked up some pretty cool stuff and uh, I'm sorry if you can hear the 3D printer going in the background there but I've been cranking out parts for these uh, modular battery packs that I've been building lately. Therefore, well, there. This is a model I got off Thingiverse. Actually, a couple models. I this handle is a separate model, and this enclosure was another model. They're, they were designed for like e-bike battery packs. Um, be able to bolt a whole bunch of these things together to make a big pack. What I've decided to do with them instead is to turn them into kind of a uh, a rack mount system. Um, these are 18650 cells, by the way. They're out of old recycled laptop batteries. They were the ones that were still alive out of the packs after I opened them up. Um, but yeah, these are designed to be kind of a rack mount modular system for solar energy. I've been printing a bunch of these. I've only got three of them so far. Um, they take quite a long time to print, like eight hours per side and another three hours for the covers, uh, about an hour for the handle and these little metal pieces. So like a full day or more of printing for each of these. So I've been working my printer overtime, cranking these things out, and uh, also been working on testing all of these cells as well. Um, these aren't really matched capacity-wise, so all of the cells are run in parallel in here. So each of these packs has 16 cells in it and is a 3.7 volt nominal pack so it's essentially one cell of the entire system um, and what I plan to do is test these once they're hooked together there will be a bus bar in here with individual little fuse wires very thin fuse wires that can maybe only take like an amp or two of current without burning out um, those, will, those will all be connected to a bus bar that goes down the side and I'll have some little bullet type connectors that'll be flush on here so you can't short it out and um, those will be on one side to key it in so you can only insert it the proper way um, but once I get those in there I'll be able to hook them up to an IMAX B6 and do a discharge test and charge test on each of the individual packs to make sure everything's okay um, hopefully it is because these are actually glued together um, I can take the covers off to replace fuses if they do happen to get overloaded. But aside from that, if I want to get this apart, I have to break the uh, I have to break the glue joints on here, which I can still do, but I'd rather not. Um, I could have made them bolt together, but I didn't have the proper stuff at the time. And well, I don't really plan on repairing these once they're done, since these are all quite old, um, totally free cells. Basically, I'm going to use them till they quit working and then chuck them. And if a cell is acting up, I'll just go in there and clip the wire to that one particular cell and continue using the pack without them. Um, but then once once I get these things all tested and categorized uh, power-wise, I'll match them in sets of three. So I'll pick whichever ones are the closest in capacity, put them together in a series set of three with a battery management system in between there, and then I'll be doing, I think I want to do 10 sets of three. So there will be 30 of these things total when it's all done. So I'm a tenth of the way there, and I keep acquiring more and more of these, um, of the actual individual cells. So this is going to be quite a large system when it's all said and done. But then again, it really won't take up that much space. These individual little units aren't that big. And, um, yeah, I'll be able to match them up in fairly close sets, and then that'll keep them pretty well balanced. So it doesn't really matter what the capacity of one of these is. Most of these cells are around 1.7 to 2.2 amp hours. So, yeah, I mean, they're going to be pretty decent capacity. You should be able to get, oh... Mm, probably 30, 30 to 35 amp hours of capacity off of each of these. Um, and multiply that out by your voltage times 30, and that'll give you how many uh, watt hours or kilowatt hours. I think I, I think I calculated out to be several, several kilowatt hours um, all said and done, which is a pretty good-sized battery. I mean, that could run 
a lot of the things in my house for several hours. Um, it, I want it to be essentially emergency backup system because these can stay charged for a very, very long period of time if you have no power, unlike lead-acid batteries that require a constant charge on them. You can charge these up and then disconnect them, and they will stay charged for uh, months at a time without really having to do a maintenance charge on them. So lithium-ion batteries really are a good way to go for solar if you can get them cheaply. And if, I mean, heck, if you got a source of old laptop batteries like I do, then heck, why not try this? I mean, it, it's pretty, it's pretty fun to do too. You know, I like messing with this stuff. Um, they are extremely dangerous to take the batteries apart. I have worked on it a lot and found relatively simple and easy ways to disassemble them. Honestly, I prefer the uh, Chinese laptop batteries for disassembly just because they use a lot less glue or a lot lower quality glue on them, so they come apart a whole lot easier. But hey, they also have a lot lower quality cells in them. But uh, usually they turn out to be pretty good, um, like 2 amp hours, 2 to 2.4 amp hours each, so they're usually pretty decent for uh, salvage. I wouldn't really pay too much money for them. However, my last e-bike battery was built out of 80 2.2 amp hour cells. So that was a good pack. And that thing still, it gets me 20 to 30 miles on a charge on my latest electric bike. So I'm quite, uh, quite happy with the performance on that. Um, but yeah, anyway, that's just a little overview of some of the stuff I've been working on with these. Um, I don't think I'm going to talk about that a whole lot more because this isn't really what I planned on talking about in the video. So there's a good uh, good 10 minutes of rambling about that. I don't know how long that actually was. Um, but yeah, I picked up some interesting motherboards today. This is a Pentium 3 board. Well, the CPU is a Pentium 3. It's a slot. I think this is a slot 1. Uh, board or socket. I guess it's, well, it's not really a socket. It's a slot CPU. These are pretty cool, though. Um, I had a couple of them before. I think I've got a Pentium 3 and a couple of Celerons, but really only one motherboard that supported them. I now have that board there, as well as this one here. This one doesn't have an AGP slot, but it does have a fairly beefy-looking onboard video chip. It's got a nice big heat sink on there. It looks like eight RAM chips there for the dedicated video. Um, so it does have some sort of decent looking onboard video. Fairly standard layout on the back. Unfortunately with these I did not get any uh, I.O. shields, which is a little bit disappointing. I would have liked to have gotten those, but hey, these were free, so can't really complain too much. Uh, some of these boards seem to be going for quite a bit on eBay. I looked up the pricing on it. I've seen them going from like $80 to $100 a piece, which is really quite surprising. Now that the CPUs seem to be absolutely freaking worthless, at least the Intel ones seem to be pretty much worthless, uh, but the boards are quite valuable, it seems, although I'm not going to be selling these. I'll be using them for some projects. Um, yeah, this one's kind of nice because it's got an AGP slot as well as two ISA slots, which is something you don't really see too much. Um, from this kind of vintage Pentium 3 era stuff. You usually didn't find ISA, usually all PCI on uh, machines of that vintage. Um, however, I don't know if this was really supposed to support a Pentium 3. I think it can. This was actually in the other board. I just stuck it in here to see if it would fit, and yes, it does. Um, this may have been a Pentium 2 board because I think the slot 1... Uh, CPUs could be either Pentium 2 or 3, um, or Celerons. Two, Pentium 2, Pentium 3, or Celeron. I mean, don't quote me on that. I, I'm not 100% sure, but I know, um, I know I have a board that can support Pentium 2s and Pentium 3s, which is kind of rare. Usually between generations, there's a different socket, um, but uh, apparently these were cross-compatible. So that's, that's pretty good. Um, I do like that particular cooler style on there. It's kind of neat looking. Um, I don't know what uh, speed this is. Uh, I see 450 slash 512. So it could be a 450 megahertz, 512 kilobytes of uh, cache. That's what my guess is. Um, that would make sense. It says right up here. I don't know if you can see that. 
There we go. Yeah. I'm going to guess this is a 450 megahertz Pentium 3. So, fairly slow clocked. I've, I've got another one somewhere that I think is a 750 megahertz, which is actually totally passively cooled. It's got a large, large aluminum heat sink, although I believe it was designed for server use, so it probably would have had some sort of ducting over the top of it and a fan to blow across that way. I think it was designed for multiple CPUs um, close together and a single fan to cool both of them. However, I have used it in a passive just using the case fans for cooling and it never really got hot so uh, that was I don't know I guess passive cooling on that large of a heat sink was fine uh, since it did still have some air movement from the uh, from the case fans itself um, but I do like having one that's got an active um, fan on it and the fan still seems to be pretty good it's a little dirty uh, but not too bad honestly for something like this this is pretty clean a little bit of dust I probably I'll probably wash the board and give it a good clean just to get all the dust off of it and make it look like new. Um, that's really honestly the best way I've found for cleaning this old stuff is just pull the uh, CMOS battery out, take all the expansion stuff out of it, and give it a good rinse. And then dry it out really, 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 really well. Otherwise, you will be in for some serious world of hurt if you plug it back in if there's any moisture anywhere because it will damage it. It'll it almost guaranteed burn out a chip somewhere, um, especially these BGA chips. You get water under there and you don't know it's under there, you plug that sucker back in, it will cook the crap out of that chip and it will never work again. So uh, yeah, dry them out real good. I suggest putting them in a bag with uh, packs of silica gel. Uh, don't use rice. For the, for the love of God, don't dry stuff out with rice. It gets in everything. It's not very good at absorbing moisture. Whatever you do, just save some of those little silica gel packets. They're fantastic for this. Save the little packets out of whatever, shoes, and motherboards come with them. And anything that's got those little packs of silica gel in them, put them in a Ziploc bag so they don't absorb a bunch of moisture. And uh, save them for when you need to dry stuff out because they work fantastic for that. And you can probably go on eBay and buy them too. I wouldn't, uh, I wouldn't bother since you get them so frequently with all the stuff you buy. Um, I've got like big Ziploc bags full of them. But the neat thing about those silica gel packs is once they've absorbed all the moisture they can hold, you can just take them and microwave them, and that forces all the moisture out of them and you're using them again. I don't think there's really too much of a limit on how many times you can use them. They're really good for that. So they're a reusable, renewable method of drying this stuff out. Works great. Um, I know a lot of people use them for drying out phones and things when they get them wet. Um, but yeah, make sure if you ever do um, wash a board like this, pull the CMOS battery out because the board is still technically powered if you have that battery in there. And that can do some serious damage and corrode things in all sorts of nasty ways. Uh, this battery actually looks like it's kind of bulged, so uh, that one's going to be going into the trash. Um, yeah, I don't, I don't like the look of that. But uh, yeah, let's take a look at some other stuff that I acquired here. <clears throat> These are kind of interesting. A couple of AMD Athlon, I think these are Athlon K7 chips. Uh, again, these are slot chips. I don't think they're compatible with that uh, particular motherboard. Um, and I believe there's supposed to be a heat sink on this side of them with probably some sort of fan arrangement. I believe these are a like 700 megahertz or 750 megahertz processor and these things sell for a surprising amount on ebay i looked them up and they're like uh 50 to 60 bucks a piece for these uh usually a lot more if they have the fan and heat sink assembly uh so yeah they're, they're pretty interesting little chips um big aluminum plate on the back which is kind of neat uh, it looks like there was a thermal pad here of some kind so i'm going to guess uh, it looks like the original heatsink probably would have clipped into these notches here somehow. Not entirely sure how that would have hooked on. Um, but yeah, these are a really neat kind of package. They, they remind me of some sort of ROM cartridge or something from an old video game. Like a, a NES or Super Nintendo game cartridge. Kind of neat. They also have these little locking clips up at the top. Looks like you can push them in and they stay locked back. Insert them and then push them back. Oop. Yeah, so that, that's pretty cool. They're a neat package. Uh, they're worth a fair bit. I'm not going to sell them either, though. I'm going to 
keep hold of all this stuff because I think uh, if I can find a motherboard and cooler for these, I'd like to make a build with uh, with these processors. I, I'm kind of interested in older AMD stuff because you just don't see it as much as Intel older Intel processors. The AMD stuff isn't as uh, common, at least as far as what I've been uh, able to find. I have only a couple of vintage AMD processors, but just just oodles of old Pentium, Pentium 2 and Pentium 3 stuff. So, yeah, these are about, uh, I would imagine, Pentium 3 era. Since, uh, oh yeah, copyright 1999, it says here on the side. So yeah, these would be from about the same period as the Pentium 3 processors. I don't know how they compare performance-wise. You can't just compare clock speeds. I and mean, these are clocked higher than the Pentium 3 I've got over there. But uh, something tells me they probably don't perform as well as a similar clocked Pentium 3. Uh, let's see, i got another motherboard here. It's actually boxed. It's a uh, first main board, so it's a cheap board. Um, yeah, this looks like a, it's an AMD board. What I found kind of interesting is the uh, previous owner kept this little AMD CPU box, which is pretty cool. Looks like an Athlon, Athlon chip of some kind in here. No idea what kind it is. Yeah, I know I'm touching the pins. Ooh, what do you do? Um, probably won't hurt it. Yeah, it's an Athlon here. Copyright 1999, so similar vintage to those other Athlons. Um, I do not know what the clock speed is on this. I don't see any sort of markings to uh, distinguish what that would be, so I'll have to power that up and see what it is. Um, but the board itself looks to be in fairly good condition. It's got a couple of bloated capacitors down here. There's one right there and one right there. I can rip those out and put some new ones in, no problem. The rest of the caps actually look to be pretty good. We do have one ISA slot on here, which is again kind of rare. Because um, by that time, ISA was getting pretty darn outdated. Um, yeah, this looks like a fairly nice board. It is a, uh, it's not DDR RAM, it's, oh crap. Uh, what was, uh, crap. I can't remember what that was, what the name for that RAM is. I don't know, I've got a bunch of it. Um, it's like PC-133, but, uh, oh, not Sims. Oh well, I'll uh, I'll remember that. I'm sure when I'm editing this, um, and I probably won't bother to put in an annotation because everybody knows what I'm trying to remember, and normally I do. But uh, yeah, fairly standard layout on the back here. Matter of fact, I believe it's identical to those other two boards. Uh, we do have some sort of onboard audio. It's probably mm, oh, that's probably our audio chip down there. It looks like a Via chip. I don't know Via audio, but uh, either that or it's somewhere else on here and I'm missing it, but uh, I'm going to guess that VIA chip down there is our onboard audio, which is a bit annoying because I don't know if I'll be able to get drivers for that. I'll probably have to put in a different sound card if I want uh, if I want drivers. Um, something I do notice is it's got a fair few uh, fan headers. It looks like it's got three different... Uh, fan connectors. Hopefully those are speed controlled. Um, a lot of these older boards I know only have a CPU fan header, which is a little annoying because that means you got to run all your other fans at a static speed, which uh, I guess that's fine if they're just a case fan move a little bit of air. Uh, with a lot of this older stuff, it's not really putting out that much heat anyway, so hey, I mean, whatever. I mean, it works. Uh, let's see if there's anything else in this box. I didn't actually look in here. Doesn't look like it. I think it's just, yep, just the cardboard. So, yep, nothing else in there. Any static foam. And that's it. Alright, that's some kind of interesting stuff. Definitely something to play with. Um, yeah, let me know what, the, what you think I could uh, do with some of this stuff. I don't really have any plans for it yet. Um, another thing I do want to show you before I end this video. I'm not going to make this one as long as some of our previous ones. Let me rearrange the camera here, and I'll show you this interesting case that I have also acquired. Okay, camera stayed put. I brought the case to it. Um, but yeah, looks fairly standard so far. Let's bring the camera up. Yeah, this is one tall, tall case. Um, 
Yeah, what you're looking at are six five and a quarter bays. I actually I do have the covers for all but one of them. I took them out because what I plan to do with this is relocate my server to it. This is a server case and it has two kind of individual compartments. It's got the upper portion with the five and a quarter bays and the lower portion that supports the motherboard. There looks like there's two 80 millimeter fans in the back. I hope those are still good. Uh, this is the one of the ugliest cases I've ever seen in my life, but um, I think I can do some work some magic with this thing to make it look a little better. Uh, I don't really care too much what it looks like. Um, I'll paint it because I don't want it to be beige. It'll stick out like a sore thumb and all my stuff that I've got down here. Um, but uh, yeah, ugly purple power switch and reset switch, weird oval LEDs, and what appears to be some sort of animal urine on the bottom, which I am definitely not too thrilled about. Um, but yeah, there's really, there's nothing in the case, it's, it's aside from the fans and a few, uh, a few power connectors and whatnot. Ugh, those cables are sticky. I don't want to touch it. I'm going to hose this thing off before I do anything with it. Spray it down with some sort of soap and water and take it outside and spray it with a garden hose. Because I really don't want to touch it in the way that it sits. Um, matter of fact, it's dangerously close to my drink back there. I might have to dump that out. <laughs> uh, I know, I'm weird. Um, but yeah, this is going to be an interesting case for the server. I want to put um, two hot swap bays up here that take up three uh, five and a quarter bays each and hold four drives in each one, four three and a half inch drives. Uh, so it'll hold eight hard drives up here, and then internally I want to put another four hard drives. So I'll have a total of 12 hard drives in this thing when it's done. What I plan on doing is taking my existing array that I have, the existing four 750 gigabyte drives, plugging them in down here and importing the array into FreeNAS, if I can, after I back it up of course, I will import that into a separate array, and then I will leave these bays essentially empty until I feel like adding more space and then I can com I can populate them as I see fit. Um, what I may do is put four drives in here and then add another two to expand the array a little bit. Keep a few drives for spares because I should be acquiring four more of those 750 gigabyte Seagate drives fairly soon. Um, that'll give me enough room to work with and then I can add hard drives as I see or as I have the need for them because right now my server has four 750 gig drives in a RAID 5 configuration so I'm essentially losing the capacity of one drive for parity and I do not have a hot spare assigned because there is literally no place to put it so um, yeah that's a little bit of a problem so I'm down I really only have uh, two terabytes of redundant storage for my video making uh, adventures here, so that I'm, I've been running out fairly quickly. I'm down to, I think, 200 gigs. Um, this whole recording in 1080p, 60 frames per second thing really sucks up a lot of space. Uh, every video takes uh, three or four gigabytes of space. So, And I film a lot more stuff than I actually post, because a lot of it, well, I don't deem it to be worthy of being posted. So, yeah, I'm running out of space. I need to be doing something with that within the year. Um, I mean, I've had the server for three years now, so it's really time to retire it. Uh, it's running an older AMD FX processor. I don't think I've made a video on it. Um, I'll just reorient the camera. It's that System Axe case down there. That is Saturn, the current storage server. Yeah, it's a nice little machine, but it just doesn't have the uh, just doesn't have the number of drive bays that I need. I might keep it pretty much the way it is, just for media like uh, movies and TV shows and running Plex off of it, since it does work pretty darn well for that. And I really don't see myself needing more than two terabytes of space to run all my Plex content. Uh, so that might just turn into a media server, and this here, the new case, may turn into the uh, production, uh, video production server. So we'll just see how that all goes. Um, I'm really not sure where I'm going to put this thing. Um, 
honestly it may here it may go on top of my video editing rig over there ah focus you fuck all right <laughs> move the camera over so you can see it yeah that that sucker back there the corsair 750d that is my main video editing pc it's pretty old uh, hardware but it works and yeah it's a first gen core i7 950 i want to say pretty old hardware but hey it gets the job done it renders videos quickly it's stable it's reliable which is more than i could say for my fx 8350 build um i still have it i just don't use it um matter of fact that board in the 8350 um I don't know, I'll probably swap out the 8350 with a lower powered FX chip, and uh, that might be what powers this machine here. Either that, or I'll get a, an inexpensive AMD CPU motherboard combo from uh, Micro Center, just because they have good deals on that stuff. I might slap a cheap quad core FX chip in here, or potentially even like a A series APU. Um, It'd be pretty much whatever the cheapest motherboard I can get at the time that has as many SATA ports as I can find. That way I don't have to have as many um, SATA, uh, SATA cards in here, because I know I'm going to have to install some expansion cards to add in more ports, because hardly any board... The only board I have that supports 12 SATA ports is the one in that uh, 750D over there. That board is an ASRock Extreme 6. It's got 12 SATA ports, 6 SATA 2... 6 SATA 3. Um, really versatile board. It's got six USB 3 ports. It supports four on the back, two in the front. Uh, it's just a really, really solid, upgradable, expandable board. Heck, that thing even has IDE and floppy connector. It's got like all the legacy I.O. Uh, as well as all the modern stuff. So it's a really good kind of eh, just a general use board. I really, really love it. Uh, that chip is plenty powerful enough. The 950, I think, is a 3 gigahertz quad-core hyper-threaded chip. I've got 12 gigs of DDR3 RAM in there. I can easily expand it to 24 if I want. Um, just a really excellent system. I love it. Um, I eventually want to put an SSD in it because I've just got a 1 terabyte hard drive in there, but uh, that's not really necessary at the moment. But anyway, let me know what you think about all this stuff. I've got some work to do. This case is going to need a lot of work to be usable. I want to paint it probably just black. Uh, nothing fancy. Um, but yeah, let me know what you think, guys. And until next time, take it easy.